there we go. <laughs> I am James, and as you may have just seen, uh, I am not only going to be the keeper for today's game, sort of, it's a solo scenario, so we're kind of all sharing the responsibility, but I am also going to be doing a lot of the tech side hosting, uh, because Dave is not here. So get ready for some... Uh, last time we had a bell going through the entire thing. <laughs> this time it's going to be perfect. It's going to be flawless. We're not going to have a single problem. Uh, we are playing Alone Against the Static, which is a recently released solo scenario, but let's not focus on that for the moment. Let's focus on all of the lovely cast that we're going to have joining us. Uh, so please, Art, do you want to start us off? Tell everybody who you are. Hi, uh, I'm Art, pronounce they them. Um, I exist on this stream currently and literally nowhere else. I only uh, become corporeal for this specific two-hour segment, and then I go back into whatever goblin-flavoured ooze uh, that I spend most of my time in. That's me! Fair enough. Oh, also, yeah. I'm accompanied by a friend today. Aww. <laughs> the sound he makes is... <laughs> me! Okay. Good, good, good company for, for goblin-related ooze. All right, fantastic. Thank you, Art. Um, uh, Jackson, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Jackson. I'm pronouns are he, him, and I am a real person with, you know, thoughts, dreams, hopes, and desires, and no goblin ooze in sight. And I am so pleased to be here because we had such a good time last time we did a solo adventure with um, with the Silly Voices I had a great time with the silly voices. I disregarded whether anyone else was having a good time with my silly voices, but I did them anyway, and I can't wait to do it again. Should be a lot of fun. Thank you. Yeah, lack of goblin news, but you know, something you can't uh, make up for. That's all That's all good. Uh, let's jump across to Alex. Hi, I'm Alex. Uh, I'm really looking forward to being one quarter of the four-headed troll that is us playing a solo adventure all together. And I mean troll in both uses of both common uses of the word, obviously. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. No, troll like in 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 many things. <laughs> Behavior um, and physicality, apparently. For sure. All right. Well, without further ado, then let's jump straight into things. I'll say briefly. Yeah, I'm uh, James. He him, and I would like to thank very quickly before we jump in. Uh, Roll20, a tool which we use to improve our games. And uh, without further ado, then, I think we are ready to get started. So, we are playing, as I said, Alone Against the Static, which you can see here behind our just lovely faces. Uh, and we are going to start going through it now. Uh, Alone Against the Static has just been released a couple of weeks ago, I think. Uh, so you can pick it up on chaosium.com and it's part of the Alone Against series. So these are campaigns where typically you will jump in, campaigns or scenarios, where you will jump in and play it by yourself. You've got all kinds of instructions. If you play Choose Your Own Adventure books, it's going to be very, very similar to what you're uh, familiar with. But we are going to be doing it in a slightly wrong way by all jumping in and all throwing in ideas uh, and all going through it like that. So in the past, we've been very keen to get chat's input as well yeah. on, you know, yeah, which sorry. way we should go to, to doom our bodies and, and minds. Also, also, you say wrong. One, should be wrongly, grammatically. And two, uh, our fun is our fun, and it's not wrong, and anyone else's fun is also not wrong. If you want to get together with a group of people and play this in a horrible troll-headed version, well, I can go forth. Uh, if you want to play it on your own, go forth. If you want to grab the person that you squish with the most and you want to play with them, go forth. There is literally no wrong way to have fun when playing RPGs. Uh... I've had a lot of coffee this morning. <laughs> Good time. Good morning. You're right. If you want to, if you I'm wanna... also like not terrified for the first time in three sessions. Every time I started the line, oh. the, or we're getting started ground, you're like, yeah. Oh, all right, got to think. The no this longer is... GMing relief. Yeah, that one. Wild. Uh, I I love GMing, but it is a thing. So Jim, you're really gonna have to wrangle a herd of cats in just me today. That 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 sounds fine. <laughs> I, I will do my best. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but like really, we're just share we're all just sharing the GMing here, so it should be, I think, uh, an equal amount of stress. Anyway, uh, let's let's start moving forward, and yeah, hello to chat. Let's get involved and uh, start uh, having a bit of fun. Uh, all of the collection of you, I know, have the uh, 
PDF that we're working from booted up uh, and ready to go because that's the easiest way we could go through this. Uh, I quite like Brian's, who the writer of this, Brian's forward in this. So a mm. uh, little bit of a weird thing. Genuinely, do we want to read uh, the forward? Would yes. somebody like to jump in with that? Um, uh, who, who thinks I can do the best impression of Brian? I mean, I, I can't do a good impression of Brian, but I can just read. Yeah, that sounds fine. Let's just go with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is uh, from our, our, good, our good friend Brian. I used to joke that I grew up in the woods from the Blair Witch Project. Our family home was locked in by state forests for two kilometres in every direction. Sorry, US folks, I can't translate that to miles for you. Growing up in a place where the darkness was thick and the sounds beyond the walls of our house were often unidentifiable, I came to appreciate a level of horror that manifests in the wild places of the world that, to me, feels absent in the cities populated by the human throng. I learned to savour the feeling of protection while inside a home in such locations, however false that safety actually was. It's a sensation of the wood of, uh, of the walls of wood and mud brick somehow keeping the cold and the darkness at bay, even if the sound of something raking gently across your bedroom window was commonplace. Alone against the static is my attempt to view the quiet wilds through the lens of the Cthulhu mythos. I wanted to give players a strong sense of place and isolation. Setting the scenario in the 1990s allowed me to showcase how Call of Cthulhu can flourish in all settings. The modern age opens new avenues of horror not available in the 1920s, such as creepy videotapes of unknown origin. It is my hope that both new and returning Call of Cthulhu players discover an aspect of horror that they may not have encountered before, and I especially hope that they find inspiration with which to weave their own tales of mythos horror at the gaming table. B.W. Holland, Melbourne, 2022. A good year. <laughs> A fine vintage. Yes, yes. It, it, <laughs> It, it, it was it was just last year until so very recently, uh, <laughs> but yes, thank you very much. Art. And yeah, For a second, you. I was like, "What do you mean it was last last year?" You know, yeah, I get it. I follow now. Well, that took me a sec. We crunched the numbers. The math checks out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's so a fun, fun little just like editorial peek behind the scenes because uh, I, I was uh, I worked on the editorial for this. Uh, we had a whole thing trying to get um, oops, uh, a whole thing trying to get the. Uh, uh, dates to line up because we weren't exactly sure whether we were going to be at what time we were going to be releasing it. So hearing that, I said 2022. No, that's two years ago. We got the date wrong. No, we didn't. It's just 2024 now because uh, my brain is a little fried. So all good. There's a little bit of rules that come next, and I don't think we need to spend our time going through all of those details in particular. Basically, Alone Against the Static works much like any of the other Alones, if you've played any of them. One of the cool, unique features it has is that it's got a logbook sequence. So this is something where we can basically acquire like ticks or tags throughout the course of the scenario, which we can then uh, use to like unlock certain effects or if we've tagged certain things, you know, we can't make certain choices, that sort of thing. So that's we'll dope. jump across the logbook a few times. Uh, sorry, did you want to say something? I just said that's dope. Yeah. That's a really a cool, unique little thing that I haven't seen in one of these before. That's awesome. All kinds of cool stuff. All right, mm -hmm. so let's uh, get moving further forward uh, and we'll jump across to the actual beginning of the scenario, which is on page eight for those following along at home. Uh, we've gone with art, just going around in the order of my Zoom windows and nothing else. Alex, do you wanna, do you wanna start us off with a little bit of reading? Ooh, yes, let me find. So I've got the character sheet open in the same page, so I'm just gonna have to do a scrolly. That is quite all right. We're on page eight. Okay. Ooh. Getting started. Uh, page eight of the doc, ah. not, like page eight. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, page yeah. eight, not page eight of not the page document. eight in the PDF. Yes. Yeah. Cover pages. <laughs> They'll get you. Yes. That old chestnut. <laughs> page I don't know because my PDF read it. Nine. Page nine. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> Amazing. Start. Somewhere in the forgotten wilds where pine needles carpet the forest floor, something stirs. Wind whips around the black hills to places where bears, rabbits, and birds never visit. The trees of the surrounding forest shiver beneath the moist earth. Something wakes. Shifting from beneath the soil, it erupts in silence from the ground. Its emergence 
reverberates throughout the wild. Far off, a wolf howls in mourning for what will soon pass. It pulls itself from the darkness and breathes. It blinks. So we now take our chosen of two investigators, uh, something we just walked through a little bit in the instructions above, and we go forward. We can pick to play as Alex or as Charlie. And in the grand tradition of keeping things as confusing as possible by using the same names again and again and again, we're going to be playing as Alex. So thank you, Alex. We will now go across to Alex. Jackson, do you want to read section number one? Sure. Uh, this is uh, me playing Alex. Jackson playing Alex. All right, number one. Damn it! Charlie growls, struggling to find an impractically struggling to fold an impractically large map over your car's steering wheel and avoid veering off-road into a tree at the same time. Can you just let me hold the map? You ask. No, I can do this just fine. Charlie says and slams on the brakes to round another tight bend. It is late afternoon on a rural back road deep within the Black Hills of South Dakota. Sun is high, but the air is cold. You've seen nothing but pine trees and two narrow winding lanes for over an hour. Your car's radio is getting weaker. It splutters out a Neil Diamond song laced there. Try that again. It splutters out a Neil Diamond song laced with static. We should tick Alex on the log sheet because that's who we're playing. We will absolutely do so. Uh, I'll Who's in charge of, of the log sheet? I'm, I, I, I'm going to jump down to the log sheet in the uh, PDF now just so that people can see uh, approximately what I'm talking about. And over here, you've got this lovely checkbox situation here. No spoilers, though. Don't look at all of the options that are on there, although, I mean, you can read it without getting spoilers. That's the idea of the log sheet. But let's go right back up uh, to uh, Excellent. continue We on. should either keep offering help um, with oh, the map, man. I guess, or we can change the radio station. Now, I want to fiddle with that like radio station knob. I think that's going to be really not annoying at all. <laughs> consequential decision. Not in the least. I mean, yeah, look, as someone who's dealt with lots of people who are like, no, I don't need your help, you just go, okay, well, I'm going to do okay. something else while you get mad at a map that you could fully, like, you'll come and ask for help when you're ready, but pushing it's a time. So let's just, I'm with... I'm with Alex and Alex on this one. I think we should just radio. <laughs> okay, I, I think that's already votes in favor of radio. Uh, let's 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 start messing with stuff. Um, so we're going to go straight across to three, which is just one further down. Uh, I think I'm going to be doing a lot of talking, just sort of moving throughout the document. So I might get the collection of you three to continue to read. So we'll jump probably straight back to art. Mm -hmm. And just a piece of context for people following along. Yeah, that's, so Alone Against the Static, as a point of difference, is much more narrative focused than some hmm. of the other points, much more character driven. It's a little bit of a slow burn. And the <laughs> context here is that we are a, uh, we're playing as one part of a couple who is going on a romantic trip uh, out into uh, a, a remote cabin in the woods to try and uh, uh, rekindle the spark. Uh, and it's clearly going uh, great. Already, just fantastic. Uh, Raid or hate Charlie, I think by the end, we've got to decide whether we're going to keep this. <laughs> All right, uh, so I will. Uh, we've jumped to three. You reach forward and turn the dial. The speaker vomits static while you scan for a signal. Please, Charlie barks and turns off the radio. I can't think with all that noise. You raise your hands defensively. All right, you say, but Charlie ignores you. You stare at them for a few seconds and sigh and turn to stare out the window. You watch the muddy green blur of passing trees for several minutes. Finally, Charlie says. They jab a finger down at the still tangled map. It's the next left. You peer ahead and spot a tiny unpaved road cutting deeper into the forest. Charlie pulls onto it and the two of you weave through the trees in silence. Make a psychology roll to gauge how Charlie is feeling. If you succeed, go to four. If you fail, go to eight. I'll be honest, I'm not, I'm not a big Charlie fan so far. <laughs> they've, uh, they've not uh, impressed me. Oh, but if you're reading Charlie's, this is this is what I really like about this scenario is I had a glance at the the bit next to that first introductory one on the road. And if you're playing Charlie, you're not going to be a big fan of Alex either. <laughs> oh, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, they're messing with the radio. They're, These are oh, two God. annoying people annoying the shit out of each other. 
Uh, I feel like this is, yes, but also these are just two people. Yeah. Who have and clearly gotten true. on each other's nerves exactly. in a way they're, that is they're like. Two people prob- they're just two who people. Who have made each other annoying. Yeah, yeah. Or just who, yeah. Sometimes it's if you're already Probably annoyed at someone day. for so many reasons, anything that they do will annoy you. And that's just, that's just people. Sometimes that's just do how it be like. How we go? Let's, let's, let's go for the psychology role. Let's go for Jim? the psychology role. Okay, firing through. Uh, we have a psychology of 45, and our psychology is going to be... Coming through shortly, I would hope. Did that fire I can't through? wait. That appeared not to have fired through. Let me just double check what's going on there. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Don't psychology, make me no, there we go. Uh, psychology, come through. That is a hard success. So we are absolutely. Nice. Hell yeah. Let so if we succeed, we go to four. Alex, do you want to take over mm-hmm. reading number four? Right below. Charlie seems agitated. It's been over three hours in the car, so that's understandable. So reach over, put a hand on their leg and squeeze. You see them smile just a little in response. Not far now, Charlie says. Good. I can't wait to stretch my legs. You continue deeper into the forest. The little road you're on winds erratically, dipping up and down as it dodges between the hills. The sky gets lost in the branches of pine trees. As the evening shadows lengthen, you feel cold seeping in from outside. After a few minutes, a few more turns, and a few miles travel deeper into the forest, the sun sets. Your car's headlights cut into the darkness. And I lose the page. Your car's headlights cut into the darkness, revealing the road ahead just a few feet at a time. Eventually, the lights the lights drift over the front of a cabin, reflecting off two windows on either side of the front door, which seem to stare back at you ominously. The car stops, and the headlights shut off. Finally, you sigh and step out onto the gravel driveway. As you walk around to the trunk to help with the suitcase, the cold night air seizes around you like a vice. Are you hungry? Charlie asks, while you try to keep from shivering. Make a con roll to resist being touched by cold. Ooh. Constitution roll coming up. Let's see how we go. While we do that. You can hear my cat yelling in the background. I apologize. He's having a time. I just wanted to like flag that I really love that currently the only pronouns we've been given for uh, our significant other is they. So we kind of mm-hmm. just get to decide which of those two photos it is and like who, like what kind of relationship we're in and what we're playing with here. Yeah. Just want to note that like that's really dope as someone who's, you know, uh, non binary. I love, I love seeing that in my modules. I love, I love feeling included. So, uh, A plus on the Chaosium team for that one. And Brian. Always a bit of fun. Also, some, some practical angles to it in terms of, uh, scenario <laughs> story structure and, and, and choose your own adventure mm-hmm. stuff. But let's, let's leave that to the side and ignore just <laughs> on the positives. <laughs> All of the above. So, uh, did we, we succeed or fail? Uh, oh, sorry, these are taking a while to come through. Sorry about that. Uh, mm. now, so the answer is constitution has come through as a success. So, hey. uh, we are not going to be touched by cold, and we Excellent. can decide that we are hungry or not. Uh, yeah, six or 12. Charlie asks, Are you hungry? Um, it, but is it uh, a passive aggressive loaded question? <laughs> Almost certainly, but like, I feel like the little I'm always smile. Hungry. I feel like the the little interaction we had where, yeah. like, you know, you did the squeeze and they were, like, they smiled. I feel like that's a legitimate question of, like, hey, I'm offering an olive branch here. Like, do you want – that that feels like an olive branch to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But also, like sure. – But also, but we also, don't know whether we're hungry or not. I think we can, we can decide whether we're hungry. Chat, I, I feel like right I'm now? always hungry, especially after a three-hour mm-hmm. drive. Beauty oh, well, if Alex is always hungry. I'm it's always snack hungry. time. Beauty of role play. I may not be, like, dinner hungry, but I could – like, a little snack – no. I mean, I'm just going to quickly also be like, I may have accidentally scanned the next entry and I know what we're having for dinner and I want it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh. is, it's, it's very, um, it's very <laughs> like in a, in a, in a, <laughs> uh, a digital RPG where you get asked a qu- question to an NPC and they like kind of stand there, like just sort of animating <laughs> for a while <laughs> while they think. And the Trying to optimize. Could you imagine actually interacting? Yeah, with this person who, like, is having a four-way conversation in their head every time they make a choice. It's like, are you hungry? Ten minutes later. Yeah. It's after it. looking, hungry. after Googling, like, the, like, the full FAQ game guide and deciding, you know, what's the optimal <laughs> strategy mm-hmm. at this point of the decision. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I feel personally called out as someone who's done that for various things. 
being like, what but, if I have to choose? What's the what's gonna happen if I choose this option in this quest? I don't yeah. want a bad outcome. Tell me now. Are you hungry? Yes. Are, are you hungry? Then then I'm, please I'm hungry. read on. Oh, it's me next. Sick. <laughs> uh dope. You nod. Sure. Hamburgers? Hamburgers it is. You take a brown grocery bag from the car's trunk, grab your suitcase, and walk to the cabin door. Charlie opens it up and steps inside. You follow, closing the door behind you to keep the chill out. Go to 11. <clears throat> Alex, happy to jump in at 11? The cabin isn't very big. It's just one central room with a double bed, a chest of drawers, and a corner set up to serve as a kitchen. There's no microwave. Both the oven and the stove use gas, and you see two doors. One goes to the rear of the cabin, while another leads to a small bathroom. You just know it's going to be freezing in there. On the wall opposite the bed is a TV and VCR unit sitting on top of a cupboard. The whole cabin is lit by muted yellow bulbs. It's not dark, but it's not quite light either. I'll be in the john, Charlie says, and then steps inside the small bathroom and shuts the door. You are left alone. You put your suitcase on the bed, take out a few essentials, then move to the kitchen and unpack your groceries. There is a gas fridge and an icebox that, judging by the steady and not at all soft hum emanating from it, was installed sometime in the 1970s. Uh, To get started on dinner, go to 13. To wait for Charlie, go to 16. I think we've established I'm hungry. All right, we're going straight through to that. I want to jump in quickly and say I'm going to be interested to see across the course of this because we've got a couple of just scope of years in between just the four of us. I think that the attachment to the technology that's referenced here is already like has a gradient just between us four. I think it might do, yeah, yeah. because I've definitely been on family holidays where it's been out of signal range, (laughs) where it's just been a TV and a VCR unit, like... And like not as a like as a young young child, but as like a like a a, a person with opinions. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like as a like a like a almost in high school, really. Uh-huh. Like you're visiting a different time because you're visiting a place that's so far, so far away. Yeah, I think there's also something to be said for like the two people who grew up in two of the largest states in in Australia, being like, because mm. not only are you going on holidays, but you're going on holidays. hours away from the nearest Uh like large town and even like my hours away from the nearest country town potentially or at least an hour away yeah i Um, mean a three-hour drive to go on holidays it it was that was that's that's normal that's fine yeah yeah yeah, three hours was like three hours was the close holiday four to five was like the we went further out and then I think the furthest drive we ever did, and I want to be clear now for anyone playing along at home who doesn't realize how big Australia is. <laughs> I was uh, I grew up in Western Australia. Um, we would drive for about eight to nine hours, and we would not have made it a third of the way across the state. Like we didn't get to the border between Western Australia and South Australia because um, that's like the line. So eight hours. We used to do that at least once a year for a holiday. It was dope. It, it's not just relationship with technology. It's relationship with, like, I guess, like, space and rural kind of area. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just being, like, it's a long way away and you really don't have tech and stuff like that. I don't remember chest, like, icebox freezers except in, like, supermarkets. That That's more one. And the idea of a gas fridge, I don't think anyone, like, I assume that fridges had gas at some point and now don't because that's safer, but I don't, that wouldn't have been a thing I actually like knew about, but um, gas stoves and stuff are still kind of great. Yeah. So, I mean, um, well. yeah, I feel like Alex and I are the ones who would be like, I remember Walkmans, Discmans, MP3 players all appearing before like, iPod slash iPhones were a thing. And, I remember oh, yeah. when there was more than one media player, like type of MP3 player you could buy. I, I like that was a thing. I, I still have my Discman. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's yeah. might show I mean, up. well, it's in my parents' place, but. Well, yeah. Items which might show up actually within the course of uh, the scenario ahead. Anyone in chat as well who remembers further back from the collection of us, please feel free to jump in. In the meantime, Jackson, uh, do you want to continue us along? We're hungry. I would like to get started on dinner. Yeah. You unpack ingredients for hamburgers. You find matches in a drawer. I'll lit one to the stove's gas burner and turn the dial. 
something happen. Damn thing. You ignore the front left burner and use the front right one front right one instead. It lights up super quick. Oh, that, that, that tension and release has already got me invested. you got patties frying and a chopping tomatoes when you hear the toilet flush. Charlie emerges from the bathroom soon after, sighing contentedly. Oof, sorry. I've been holding onto that one since we left Pierre. This Gross, guy. Charlie. How charming, you mother. Charlie comes up behind you and wraps their arms around your waist. You feel their breath on your neck, then the brush of a kiss against your cheek. I love you, Charlie whispers. This Respond guy. lovingly, go to 14. To change the subject, go to 17. Wow. Straight into it. Well, are we, are yeah. we, are we, are we invested in this relationship or not? <laughs> yeah, no, I've, I've changed my mind on Charlie. I think uh, we, we, the first time we met them, they were having a bad time. But um, it's, now I'm emotionally invested. And uh, yeah. if anything happens to Charlie, I will die. And yeah, I will, I will kill everybody around me. Yes, yeah, <laughs> correct. I feel like this is a. I've had Charlie interesting... for two pages, and if anything <laughs> yeah. ever happened to them. <laughs> also, as much as like this sort of someone coming out and being like, "Yeah, I just I just had to like I was real. I really needed to use the toilet real bad," and being like, "How should that is fully just one of those like you've been in a relationship for a while." We were just in just... a three-hour car trip. I mean, yeah, <laughs> obviously, yeah, totally. this is like it's fine. Um, yeah. So, I'm, I, I think we should be invested because that's going to make so. this more fun. All right. And also, we came all the way out to this cabin specifically to, like, fix the relationship. It it, it seems counterproductive to be kind of a dick about it now. <laughs> Not doomed yeah. from the start. All right. I'll, yeah. I'll with 14 then, Art, if you want to keep us rolling. I love you too. You turn your head towards Charlie and kiss back. Now, Scoot, I need to finish dinner. You busy yourself in the kitchen while Charlie flops onto the bed. I'm so glad we're here. Me too. I think it'll be really good for us, you know? Yeah. Like Dr. O'Brien told us, Charlie said, staring at the cabin's warped reflection in the mirror black TV screen. Getting away from everything to just focus on us would be great. I think it, it could really be healing. To talk about plans for tomorrow, go to 18. To reach, reassure Charlie, go to 15. Ooh. Lean into it, 15, I'd say. Mm, I agree. All right. This is the path we are taking. Uh, yeah, you say with a faint smile. It'll be great, I know it. A few minutes pass and then you serve up the burgers. You and Charlie sit and eat silently. You find the cabin's nearby window mm, strange. Outside it's so dark that all you can see is your own reflection. It's like looking into a mirror. What do you want to do tonight, you ask, mouth half full. Charlie raises an eyebrow and you roll your eyes. Seriously? Well. You want to go on a bike ride tomorrow, on a hike tomorrow, right? You nod. How about we just fire up a movie and take it easy, Charlie gestures to the TV. That would be my, I mean, my goblin urge to complain is right, I think, but we've picked uh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're you know? being friendly. I feel yes. like we've also, like, very specifically, Charlie's like, you want to go on a big hike tomorrow, yeah. all right? Like obviously was going like you wanna you wanna you know do, do, do you wanna and you're like come on now and he's like all right you wanna go to big hike well let's just take it easy then. let's just yeah. chill like, yeah that's yeah cool. it does make feel sense. Like and also in the foreword Brian foreshadowed some creepy VCR tapes yeah. and I'd like to throw myself head forward toward that <laughs> nonsense that's true into the plot quick <laughs> let's do it. yes into the plot nineteen sure you say Charlie grins then takes the dishes and heads over to the sink to clean them you walk over to the TV unit. It's a relatively cheap model from the late 1980s, sitting on top of a dusty VCR player. You switch both on and open a cabinet beneath them, wondering what videos Charlie's brother and his wife left behind. He sure likes scary movies, you say, looking over the titles. 15 different tapes, and you're sure that covers pretty much every major slasher film of the last decade. God, none of these look good. There's not even a single comedy, Charlie asks from the kitchen. I would like to make a spot hidden roll to spot a comedy. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. Spot hidden roll coming through. Uh, or is the spot fact that fun there are terrible horror movies the good thing? Uh, but regardless, uh, spot hidden roll coming in at a failure. Ooh. Fail go to 20. Pass to art for 20. Mm-hmm. You take out the tapes and go through them one by ro one, rolling your eyes and performatively gagging at each cover as you go. Charlie walks over and joins you. Maybe we should have stopped by a blockbuster on the way. 
You're You're telling me (laughs) these covers all look cheap. I think they're bootlegged. Probably. Charlie shrugs. Could have sworn he said there was more than just horror. He said they watched something that sounded like a chick flick last time they came up. Maybe it's still in the VCR? Charlie leans over and presses the eject button on the machine. There is a whirring of mechanical internals and then the unit spits out a tape. Aha! Charlie says. Is it blank, you ask? Nothing written on it. But they're bootlegs, right? You shrug. Whatever. Rewind it and we'll take our chances. It can't be worse than any of these. To watch the movie right away, go to 28. And to get ready for bed first, 21. Mm. Movie time. Mm. I don't know. I, I feel like okay, my metagaming brain is like, it'd be really funny if whatever happens with the VCR, you're in like your gym jams. <laughs> that's what I'm worried about. That's exactly <laughs> worried what I'm about? worried that's about. That's what I'm excited for. I don't know. And also like, but also like watching a movie and then the movie ends and you got to get up again and clean your teeth. And, you know, it's just if you were ready and you're in bed and this is like the, the TV's in front of them, you can just, you don't have to get back out of bed again. You're right. right. That's what I'd want. Continue along then on 21. Bring on the gym jams. Bring on the jimmy jams. You grab your bag with one hand and head for the bathroom. I'll be right back, you say, and slip inside. It's even colder in the bathroom. You set your bag on the sink and blink at your reflection staring back at you from a nearby mirror. The door creaks open just a little. You sigh and push it closed again, but it doesn't take. You look closer and see a little latch at head height. The door obviously can't hold itself shut unless it's locked. You roll your eyes, ignore the door, and brush your teeth. A few minutes later, you return to the main room and change while Charlie waits patiently on the bed. The movie is all set up, paused at the beginning. You climb up onto the bed and settle in as well. Ready for the random, hopefully not horror film? Charlie asks. Sure am. Start it up. You smile and slip under the blankets. Charlie presses play on the remote. So we get occupied, occupied. on the logic. Oh, we now have okay. A, we have a detailed understanding of how the locks in this building work and which doors can, I, cannot be opened. Yeah. Surely not. I don't know. Occupied. <laughs> yeah. Occupied speaks to me like we're like we're, we're occupied with doing something. We're distracted <laughs> with whatever is about to happen next. So that's anyway, fine. Twenty-two. Yep. When the film begins, the screen is black. There is faint music, but no opening credits. Then the screen cuts to blurry footage that was clearly recorded on a handheld camera. Is this one of Mark's home movies, you ask? Charlie laughs and reaches for the remote. Oh, wow, I'm sorry. Wait a second, that looks familiar, you say, pointing at the TV. Charlie hesitates. On screen, you see a wall of tall forest trees. Leaves and pine needles crunch under the feet of whoever's filming. The camera pans across the landscape, creating a blur of greens and browns. Suddenly. You spot Mark's cabin, standing alone in its little clearing. A dull red sedan is parked out front. That's Julie's car, Charlie says. This must have been after their wedding. The camera is shaky. Wind rushes through the microphone, causing a bleak flurry of horrid scraping from the speakers. There's movement near the red car. A woman, Julie, is taking bags from the trunk. She's smiling. Yeah, Charlie says. This is at least five, six years ago. Julie turns as the cabin door opens. Mark steps out, walks over, and takes one of the bags from her. They smile and exchange unheard words. You sit bolt upright. What the hell? What's wrong? It's only Mark. Yeah, so who's filming? Charlie stammers and blinks. On the screen, Mark and Julie go inside and close the door behind them. The camera zooms in toward the window. The picture is a grainy blur of colours. You see movement in the cabin. The camera zooms even closer. Then harsh wind picks up and howls through the speakers. The image smashes to a slurry of loud static. White noise booms out into the room. The sound drills into your skull. You feel like it's going to make your head explode. Make a note of this entry number. You may need to return to it. Okay. We may need to return to it after we die. 22 is what we're on. And it's time for a sanity roll. Sanity coming right up. Uh, I am going to have to briefly check what the sanity for our character is. Just give me one moment. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've got 50. Excellent. And we are back to here as I adjust our sanity. Did we succeed or fail? Uh, Sorry, I just, I had to, I had to input the value into Uh, uh, roll 20. So we are now through and we have extreme success. No worries. Oh, amazing. 
in that case, I'm going to suggest that we scramble for the remote. Yeah. Because, like, we're, we're, like, we're like, ah, that's <laughs> annoying. There ain't no remotes here. We are, like, pitching ourselves across the bed to manually hit that dial. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Let's not cover our ears. Let's turn yeah. it down. More importantly, I'll, I'll notice that we, did, we didn't get unsettled as another log sheet entry. That's right. We did not we get unsettled. We are We're just occupied. <laughs> We're occupied, but settled. Okay. Occupied and settled. I mean, that's really how I want to live my life. Yeah, yeah. You dart from the bed, grimacing at the ear-splitting noise. You switch the dial and kill the TV. Charlie's sitting on the bed with their hands clamped over their ears like a dope. Sorry, it's only a remote for the VCR. There's no volume control. The hell was that? You ask angrily as you step away and slump back on the bed. Charlie shrugs. I don't know. Mark and Julie must... Uh, Mark and Julie came out here with someone else. Charlie laughs. <laughs> I don't really want to think about what my brother and his wife might get up to when they're out here. You roll your eyes. That was creepy. It was like a peeping Tom. Well, we know it's not, Charlie gestures to the TV cabinet. Why would Mark and Julie have the tape? If broken heart is checked on the log sheet, you cannot Ooh. stay calm. You must go to 24. To get frustrated, go to 24. To stay calm, go to 30. Ooh. I feel like given that we would be forced to make an option, we yeah. should take one we're not forced to do. I agree. We've but also, I didn't realise we could have a broken heart this early. Like, uh, yeah, I feel like I if we'd we have chosen to be... It, yeah. The, if we'd I have chosen to be a nuisance. We changed the subject. <laughs> yeah. Good. Let us stay calm then. I think right. we should stay calm. And move And across. I just have to get my, my cat's butt away from the screen. Move. Stay calm, Alex. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, no. Now your cat has a broken <laughs> Cinnamon, heart. Cinnamon, sit. Get... Good girl. You shake Same your head and take this. a deep breath. You're right. It's stupid. Let's just forget about whatever the hell that was. You still want to watch a movie, Charlie asks? Sure. Whatever is fine. One of those schlocky flicks, you say. Charlie gets up. But hang on. <laughs> Charlie gets up. Baby. He's scooped up into your... <laughs> Charlie is a large cat. Uh... Charlie gets up. My pick? You. Your pick. Charlie smiles and looks over the tapes in the cabinet. Ooh, this is a good one. You lean forward to look at a tape that has a guy wearing a pumpkin on his head on the cover. I think even you'll like it, babe. Somehow I doubt it, you smile. No, seriously, Charlie says and slips the tape from the case. It's about this guy as a writer and he drives up to this secluded town in Maine, right? Charlie hits eject on the VCR. And anyway, when he... The TV set blares to life. It bellows static through the cabin. Thunder is scraping and coughing bounces off the walls. You thrash and cover your ears. Charlie swears, but you can hardly hear it. The noise builds to a frenetic peak. It's almost unbearable. Then, just as quick as it began, the noise stops and the TV falls silent. All the lights in the cabin go dead. The power's out. Charlie, you asked the darkness. Yeah. 31. What was that? How was that, I think? You hear scrambling in the darkness as Charlie shuffles along the floor, one hand touching the wall. You flick the light switch several times. I thought this place was on solar power. Well, I guess solar power still runs out. Is there a backup or anything? I don't know. I guess I'll have to, I guess I'll have to head into town and call Mark in the morning. Oh, that's just great. You pull your legs to your chest. Okay, whatever. You're not used to this level of dark. The city doesn't get dark like this. You raise your hand in front of the face. You can't even see its outline. You feel anxiety rising in your chest. By the broken heart or blame game is dicked. Ooh. You cannot lean on Charlie for support. I, I propose leaning on Charlie for support at number 32. I, yes, yes. Yeah. We are now reaping the rewards of not being a dick <laughs> to Charlie. Being nice. <laughs> Charlie, can you come to bed? Sure. The bed frame creaks as Charlie crawls onto it. The silence following the outburst from the TV, sorry, in the silence following the outburst from the TV, even the slightest sound rings deafeningly loud at this point. Feel Charlie cuddle up close to you. I'm sorry, Charlie says. Don't be. It must be an old shoddy set. I think Marcus had it since the 80s. We'll fix it tomorrow. You murmur softly in agreement. Charlie wraps an arm around you. You feel their breathing on the back of your neck. It slows quickly and soon fades into the gentle rumble of sleep. The sound is steady and calming. Before long, you drift off too. The only sound that disturbs you is the faint creaking of pines echoing softly through the black hills. Oh, well, that was great. 
<clears throat> I was alone against yeah. the static. I had a really good time. <laughs> I hope you did too. <laughs> Um, you know, it was, uh, it was just nice to just take a, take a week off to do something really chill and, and nice and wholesome. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, and we fixed the relationship and everything went really well, right? That's right. right. <laughs> it was a good success story. Yeah. Right. It was really, really uh, good. See you but next week. Now up- let's go for the, let's go to 34 for the optional non-canon epilogue. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> the the non-canon the epilogue. <laughs> Cause when you wake in the morning, you're alone. What? Yeah. Oh. Get this is heaps of fun because Cinnamon's favorite spot to sit is right in front of the screen, <laughs> and she loves doing it every time I start speaking. Uh, when you wake up in the morning, you are alone. You stir in the bed and sit up, babe. There's no answer. The only sound is the wind outside carrying with it a gentle morning bird song. You get up and cross to the kitchen. There is a note taped to the chunky refrigerator, which is written in familiar handwriting. Sorry again. Just want this weekend to be special. Gone to town to help get help fixing power. Back ASAP. Love you. You set the note down. Looks like you have a few hours to yourself. Mm. Eat breakfast or go for a brisk walk. I'll also note that, a little, a little bit cheeky here, but if you glance back up just at 33, uh, yeah. which there's a little, little nyctophobe as a log sheet oh, entry yeah. that I think is uh, if we haven't been able to get support from uh, from Charlie. So glad we end up being well. afraid of the dark. Yeah. We're doing well. We're doing so yeah. good, guys. There's no way this can possibly go wrong. <laughs> uh, so brekkie or a walk? What's the go? Uh, yeah. Some people say exercise before breakfast uh, I, I th- is I good, for the, good for the body. It's good for digestion. Otherwise, you feel a little bit grot. And also, like, we did make sure to eat last night, so. Intermittent fasting. It's an OMAD diet, you know. We'll, we'll, <laughs> all right, let's do it. Straight across to 37 in that case. Is that uh, me? 30, uh, 37, yeah. Mm-hmm. Me. Uh, sorry, is that me now? Yes. I don't know. No, it's sorry, yes. outside. No, it's Jackson. Right. My bad. It is Jackson. Oh, I, I, it's Jackson. I lost track as well. Outside, the air is fresh, the sun is warm, and the sky is mostly clear. You fill your lungs with the scent of moist soil and pine trees. You take a few steps forward and peer down the driveway. It weaves away into the woods. The trees are so thick here, you'd probably have a better chance listening out for cars than looking for them. Probably have a better chance listening out for cars than looking for them. You turn and head down a walking trail just by the cabin. The earth has been worn smooth by the hiking shoes of innumerable visiting families. The forest grows thicker around you as you walk. Unseen critters skitter past in the underbrush. Birds move through the branches above, calling out, making pine needles rustle. You come across a blueberry bush just by the trail. We can stop and collect some berries or continue the walk. Don't don't mm. eat random bush berries. <laughs> don't eat bad. random bush berries. We're not. We're <laughs> <That's> not. <gross. laughs> Definitely, I don't know if this is the case in the States, but in Australia, uh, I think blueberries are like weeds and there's always a chance if you come across them, someone sprayed poison all over them to kill them. So, I mean, we are in the middle of nowhere, so that's probably unlikely. But also, come on, don't eat random forest berries. It's been established that, I, that we're a city kid also. Like in the previous entry, it was, it was, it never gets this dark in the city. You know what? We're not, we're not really outdoors people, right? Let's we're city, we're city not. folk. We're not eating the forest berries. I'm gonna, if we were in, if this was set in the UK, I'd be like, absolutely pick the berries, eat the <laughs> berries. This entire place is so populated by people that they have definitely gotten rid of all of the dangerous ones. This is the US, it's a little bigger, and I don't know anything about their plant life, so I'm it's with everyone on this one. As chat says, chat has directed us, only eat random mushrooms. Only oh, random mushrooms. Correct. Yes. Mm-hmm. Let's exactly. take that. That means we now, if if it, if the scenario offers it, we must eat the next mushroom we see. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it will be uh, Ruth Bosch's fault in chat. Thank you. Uh-huh. All right. The nature sur- surrounding you eats away at the stress layered into your being. You feel yourself truly smile for the first time in weeks. It happens without any effort on your part. It feels good. You close your eyes and turn your face to the sky. Fresh air and sunlight kiss your skin. It's glorious. Off to the left, you hear running water. You open your eyes and look towards the source of the sound. It's coming from just off the trail you've been walking along. To investigate the sound, go to 44. Stick Mm. to the trail, go to 49. If I know anything about wandering in the woods, the stupid thing to do is to leave the path. But what if it's like a waterfall or something really pretty? (laughs) Oh, no, no. I'm not saying we shouldn't. I'm saying the stupid thing to do is leave the path. And I know my fellow players, 
and what they like to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we we've been pretty so safe. So we're going to 44. We, we I, I think we're <laughs> Come on, yeah. We've been so sensible. Like, exactly. How long can we keep this up? We can't keep exactly. it up. Exactly. I feel like we have to like capitalize on, on our wins by destroying a few of them. That's right. Uh, you, you step off the trail and stride through the forest towards the sound of running water. The ground is uneven, so you steady yourself on the trunks of nearby pines as you go. You walk for a little while until the sound of the water gets louder. You crest a small ridge and discover a bubbling stream just on the other side. The water is rushing downhill fast, headed south. It's clear and fresh. The trickling sound is melodic. If the flowers in the stream is checked... This place reminds you of something. You must go to 48. Hmm. Okay. To take a drink from the stream, go to 45. To sit for a moment, enjoy the serenity. Oh, the serenity. <laughs> How's, How's the serenity? The serenity? How's the serenity? <laughs> I, don't, I don't love drinking from the stream. But I no. love the serenity. But I do love the serenity. Uh, serenity. I, it's a part of me is like, if it really is, like, it specifically said clear and fresh. Yeah. It's and also, inviting. we've been walking like, for a bit and we didn't bring a water bottle. Well, look, we haven't been told we have. We might, but I don't. I don't know. I feel like we can. I want to drink a from the weird stream here. because I think I, it's a bad idea. I don't. I don't want to stumble headlong into danger. Do we need uh, chat to break the tie? If you can't, Alex <laughs> or Jim. Ty, Ty, I, 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 oh, said you're an editor wants, on this. Wants to, wants yeah. to end it. I'm very happy to. I, I am, I'm happy either way. I was just reading okay. about um, mining pit water, which is like clear. Oh my and beautiful god, yeah, wonderful. And it's, it's not like, clear. And it's like, really yeah. blue. Yes, it's sorry, not. It's really not blue. clear, but it is yeah. really blue. And it that looks is, really inviting. Yeah, it's yeah. deeply. I think it's alkaline. Yeah, 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 no. and it's yeah. Uh, yeah, Did I'll, you also watch the weird? Yeah, I called that. Like, I said reading. I, I watched the same YouTube video that everyone else did because it got recommended. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> which one? Uh, I, I actually can't remember off the top of my head. But was I, it the Ildri- Idris Elba actual documentary, or did you watch the Folding Ideas like video that broke down the doco, or was it something else entirely? I'm not, <laughs> I think it might have been. So anyway, <laughs> I'll someone went out. on a I'll YouTube bit, dive. Bit, bit uh, let's drink that know. damn. Uh, let's drink that damn water. All right, everyone's telling us we need iodine to purify the water, so yeah, we should Kat probably Clay just says like chlorine serenity. tabs. Cat Clay says chlorine tabs. Uh, Fudgy Vomp says iodine. Neither of which is helpful. Prince Justin. It is a bad idea. A bad drink idea, the poison water. Ruth Brosh is entirely in favour of drinking the poison mm-hmm. water. So I think we got to. I mean, yeah. thank you, Prince Justin, for the advice. You're right, it is a bad idea. But, it is a bad uh, idea. But it doesn't inform whether we're going to do it or not, No, that feels like encouragement to do it, actually. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Let's yeah, do, it. do it. 45. Is this me? Yeah. Can't count. You carefully walk down to the riverbank. Loose leaves and pine needles wash downstream in a tiny rendition of white water rafting. You drop to your knees, scoop a handful of clear water into your palm and bring it to your lips. It's cold and refreshing. I'd like to take the next one as well. But after a listen roll, Jim. Yes, the listen roll is a failure, I'm afraid. You oh. uh, Okay. We're uh, distracted you, by how nice the water is. Oh, so much nice. serenity. Oh, Jackson? Yeah. oh the it's serenity. Outrageously, I'd like to take another one. Sure. Yeah. You take in a deep breath and smile. It feels so pleasant out here. You're cool and warm all at once. The t- solitude feels invigorating somehow. Ah, and that's where we'll leave it today. There's some movement. <laughs> There's a sudden movement in the trees nearby. You dart your head toward the sound, but it's too late. Whatever was there a moment ago is gone. A few shaken branches left in its wake are the only sign of its passing. That's good. We can call out or we can uh, get out. Call out and get out. Uh, call out and get out. I right mean, now on your phones. Dun, 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 I feel dun, like dun, we're dun. in a forest. Yes, we're city people, but like I feel like we're going to assume it's an animal. So why it's on earth would be you call deer. out? Yeah. I'm like, Alan. What could possibly Alan. get? Is there anything on the page Alan. that makes you think about that? No, wait, Steve. Steve. Sorry. Someone put Alan in chat. Um, <laughs> what were you saying, Jim? Uh, is there any, if, if, what, what possibly made you think it was going to be a deer? Is there any art asset on the page uh, here uh, as, as seen oh. by uh, chat? I mean, I'm just thinking like. The art. Oh, there it is. 
<laughs> anything that's like oh, no. big enough to make things rustle. I mean, stuff. like it's going to be a decent. It might be a bear, in which case, definitely don't yell I mean, out. Just fucking the, the go. The art on the page, just for for chat's reference, is. A, a Jesus deer walking on water with horrible words that, like, yeah. are those glowing? No, those are ripped out eyes. I don't think we were meant to see that. Uh, I'm not gonna, because I did skim the entry that that's related to. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna spoil it. There, it still <laughs> has us. Bad. We didn't see that. Anyway, see that. but that was I why. Think... That was probably what triggered the deer comment. <laughs> we're gonna. I feel like we're having a nice hike. I feel like we're gonna continue having a nice hike, and you cannot stop me. <laughs> I agree. It's gonna be a lovely I holiday. I Nothing think bad. We, I think we get out. I don't think we call out. I think we get out. Yep. Okay. So we went from. Hang on. Yeah. yeah. So forty nine. Going to forty nine. We're going forty nine. Sorry, I am writing down every single number we've done just to keep track because oh. it did tell us to do record. Uh, so I just needed to write down 51 because I didn't we didn't swap <clears throat> you can also it's time just to keep walking use of access a little point uh there's these eh. lovely little uh uh buttons down the bottom here mm. uh which just tell you the most recent ones you've come from just to <gasps> where you could have come from so yes. we came oh from that's cool 45 so if you're going through it you can like circle 50. yeah yeah you, 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 have, you have the ability to backtrack I mean you could follow it in a chain but you can mm. see at least uh every potential link to whatever area you're in so if you get to something oh, cool. and you realize that it's got only one link you go oh no <laughs> i'm in a yeah. unique pit yeah. Oh. yeah okay um so we're continuing 49 it's time to keep walking you free- refocus your mind and head determinedly jesus why can i not say determinedly 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 Det- determinedly no, no determined no, extra- determinedly, determinedly. You could put a little syllable, extra no, syllable no, in there as a treat. Determin- unless, unless we're doing Shakespearean, in which case it would be determinedly, but otherwise it's it's determinedly. Hmm. Wait, you good. can have an extra syllable as a treat. Yeah. We were really good. <laughs> we didn't drink the water. <laughs> That's yeah. right. You refocus your mind and head determinedly nice. down the trail, farther down the Black Hills and deeper into the forest. It's because we're Shakespearean now. Um, it's a pleasant hike. Sunlight filters through the pine branches and casts up dancing shadows all about you in the cool morning air. After half an hour or so, you feel nature calling and step behind a tree to pee. <laughs> you are fumbling with your clothes when you spot something ahead. Uh, spot something ahead off the trail and nestled in a na- narrow valley is a dilapidated wooden shed. To investigate the shed, go to fifty six. To ignore the shed, go to 79. Shed. I need shed. to know. Shed. Shed. I need to know shed. if we're going to f- finish the pee first because we need to get this magic potion water out of our body. If that's an option. <laughs> I, the, the vibe I'm getting is you are fumbling with your clothes to put mm. them back on. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I mean, okay. that Maybe went through not. our system really quick. So I don't know what was in that water. But no, no, no. So you step behind a tree. You step, you step behind a tree. You're fumbling yeah. with your clothes. That could be before or after. Or after, yeah. No, it just says you were fumbling with your clothes when you spot something. So it could be. Yeah. There is a, there is, I think that, I think that I return mean, stri- there could mean speaking. that you don't. I, I think we are relieved. Okay. If we are relieved, I'm relieved. Yeah. Um, no, yes. No, we survived the encounter with the stream. I think we can push we ourselves yeah. with the shed, right? The shed. Yep. Let's do All it. Right. 56. 56. There we go. You step through the small clearing where the shed leans lopsided against a rocky, moss-ridden mountain wall. It's not large, maybe half the size of Mark and Julie's cabin. It's made entirely of wood. A rotting piece of pine serves as a makeshift door that's only just still hanging from the frame. The place looks like nobody has been here in years. You step closer to the shed and put your hand against the door. It swings in slowly and easily. The shed is dark inside. You see the faint shadowy blotches of furniture hidden in the gloom. And if nyctophobe is checked, ticked on the log sheet, the darkness makes you nervous and you've got to go to 80. I'm not to leave the shed, of... to just look in and be like, eh, shed, and leave, go to 79. To step inside, go to 57. Spooky shed, we found it. So it. here's, I just, not that this is going to make any difference to our choices because I want everyone to ignore this as soon as I've said it. 57 is the next entry. Uh-huh. 56 says to leave the shed behind, go to 79. 57 says to leave the shed, go to 78. So if we go into the shed and Stepping then leave in. it, we're going to have a different oh. thing happen than if we just ignore it, which I think That's is, fun. which I love That's as cool. like a thing, but also That's like great. 
when these two are side by side, it's very easy to be like, hmm. I well, now I, I feel I like I know okay. a thing that I probably I shouldn't, mean, but could have. Oh, are you going to like open the door, look at it and be like, shed and leave? <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Shed, um, go. Yeah, I think look. I think we got to have a look see, right? Yeah, we got to. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. This is yeah. We're not, not scared we're not of the dark. This scenario okay, where my partner plays horror games of looking at something, seeing it's creepy, and going no and leaving. <laughs> I, that's not why we play Call of Cthulhu. Uh, I, I, that is exactly. that's how I play like a lot. Not even like horror games, but like I played Subnautica, and I fucking love that game. Uh, but the number but of times that I did a thing spooky. went no, no, backed out, and then like. I kept doing it until the point that I was like, no, became so familiar that I was like, oh, this is fine. I've been here so many times before. Uh, What's the worst that could happen? And then you go like a step further and you're like, no. Mm -hmm. And you just slowly eke your way forward through just like hiking out multiple times (laughs) until everything just feels second nature. And then you're like, (laughs) making the game three times longer than it ever needed to be. (laughs) Oh, We're not not doing that. 60 something hours to get through that game. And I'm pretty sure you could do it in like 20. (laughs) (laughs) Open the cabin door. Creepy. Leaving. No. (laughs) Good idea. We're going inside. We got to go inside. Step inside the shed. Excellent. This is the only light. The only light in the shed comes from the open door. And a few cracks in the uneven weatherboard walls. There's no windows. It's like this place was designed to be gloomy. You see a small work workbench, a wall-mounted cupboard, and a stack of cardboard boxes. The rest of the furniture is mildewy and unremarkable. The floorboards creak beneath you as you walk across the room. Depending on your choices, you may return to this entry several times. Select an option that you have not already chosen. We can search the cupboard, look at the bench, rifle through the boxes, or leave. I guess the bench is the least kind of disturbing, like disturbing the scene. I feel scene. like the boxes mm. are where we're going to find something. We, we can come. We, we may be able to come back here. Uh, yeah. I think the, the bench is the thing that will give us the most at a cursory, non, dis, not, not, non kind of okay. disturbing glance, is what I'm feeling. We're going to, we're going to 62. 62 it is. I think the question here uh, is, is is this a is this a push your luck thing where you are consistently like right. you only are going oh, to be no, able no. to search a certain amount because of expenditure of resources and oh, what this have you. Sick. Or is this a uh like you are like you only want to search a couple, but you can go as deep as you want, but pick the ones because mm. Yeah. Mm. I think this is gonna be similar to the um uh the auction, right? From if from the last yeah, yeah, yeah. Solo mm. one, right? Where it's like you have to make a choice. Mm. All right. The bench is laden with a collection of tools. None have been touched in years. They're covered in greasy dust. You see a dull grey hammer. Perhaps it could be useful. There's also what looks like a specialised miniature screwdriver set. To take the hammer, go to 63. To examine the screwdriver set, go to 64. Screwdriver set. Screwdriver set. Hands down. Like, I recently got an electric screwdriver and having, like specialized screwdriver things that it solves so many problems oh right. how much you can hit you can whack shit with any kind of blunt object I screwdrivers though specialized i wouldn't be surprised uh, cool if we need a to- blunt object to whack things with i mean uh? also yes i mean th- a bit, okay yeah because it's a miniature screwdriver you can't just like bonk someone with the back specialized right. miniature screwdriver um, set specialized any- is what's getting me actually any specialized me, does like, sound pretty good to read until we get back to the shed Oh. Sounds great. Let's do, this do it. this little round and then, all right, we're going to 64 uh, to get the, the kit, I've, yeah? I've been convinced. Let's go for the screwdrivers. Okay. You take the case and open it. It's full of tiny drivers. All I am imagining now is a case tiny. full of tiny little Adam drivers <laughs> waving at me. I was like a bunch of race car drivers in their little yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Little, little, little slot cars. Like, the helmets on going, oh. Well, Adam Driver is <laughs> in that new Ferrari <laughs> movie, so it can be Adam Driver as Adam a tiny driver little driving. race car driver. Yeah. Oh. Tiny driver. little drivers driving. <laughs> so in chat. Well, a car at some point. It could be Adam Driver driving. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Uh, moving right along. Anyway, uh, just because it's in chat. Hold me closer, tiny driver. Oh my god! Uh, no more, otherwise we'll get deported. Anyway, um, it's full of tiny drivers. The heads are bizarre and strange shapes. Your mind whirls. What wondrous secret purpose must these tools be for? What tiny instruments were they complicit in the functioning of? What strange mystery have you stumbled upon? Your mind races as you consider the possibilities. Seriously, though, it's just a set of tiny screwdrivers. You have no idea what they're for. Yeah. Check. Toolkit on the log sheet. Nice. I love it. 
We're talking. If tech support is checked, ah. you suddenly realize oh. what it's for, but we don't have that. That's interesting. Um, mm. So interestingly, we can only go to one location to- once, so we can't yeah. grab both the hammer and yeah. the set, which is weird. I feel like mm. you should be able to grab both of them, but like, I think okay. it's fine. I think it's fine. Also, like we've only got so many pockets, got, I guess. We got how yeah, many hands fair. we got? How many hands? Maybe we're wearing maybe we're wearing girl jeans and we've just got like oh. one functional pocket. Mm. Uh, the fun one with that though is uh, because we're not going to go back to the entry. What we got to check for the hammer was in case uh-huh. of emergency, which was dope. <laughs> and nice, that's <laughs> fun. Nice. All right, back to fifty-seven. Uh, we don't need to read it again. We're back in the creepy place. So, Alex, yep. uh, whatever we select next, feel free to rotate through. Cover mm. boxes. Cover the boxes. So Cupboard, the boxes, or leave. What if the... Okay. Hmm. I'm going to open the cupboards. I, I feel like there's something like dramatic about we opening the cupboards, whereas boxes in an old shed, like they're probably damp, they're probably soggy, they're probably disgusting, there's probably beetles and spiders and bullshit in yeah. them. The Although being in America, like, the spiders are not... It's like it's a different spider fear, very different spider yeah. fear. But um, It's still, more raca- raccoons. Uh, the yeah. boxes are more likely to have things of... Like, so in a cupboard is where you store stuff that you oh, like yeah. use a fair amount. Like it's normal stuff. Boxes are usually used to That's store true. things that are like not things you would usually store in. Like it depends yeah. on the mindset, but like if you think about it, yeah, your cupboards are where you store plates and cutlery and stuff that is just part of a house. Boxes are what you put in a shed to put other shit that doesn't go in your house in. So like. Uh, fair enough. All right, well, I like regardless, yeah, yeah. dramatic. Yeah, trouble. this is like a this is like a, a psychology question for the character, right? Do we want to know who shed this is? In which case, boxes. Like, do we want to know more about the person, the individual? Or do we want more useful stuff? Or are we looking uh, for useful stuff? Uh, are we like a practically practically minded person, or are we a sentimental? I mean, I feel like let's go. Let's. We feel like we're practical because we picked up the screwdriver. So let's like search yeah, the cupboards and, we also and then turn we the can TV decide off and, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so whether we, we want to deal with. Cool. I think we're, yeah, I think we're not a sentimental person. We're a keep our cool, make logical choices person. To the cupboards. Oh. To the cupboard. 58. Okay. The cupboard hangs precariously from a dilapidated wall. It has a stressful forward tilt, gripped by gravity. You see a few nu- rusted nails securing it in place and you carefully open the doors. Within are two little shelves, both lined with videotapes. They're home tapes like the one Mark's had, with white stickers on the front marked by black sharpies. The tapes are all caked with moss and spider webs. They're Make narrow. a spot hidden roll to search through the tapes. All right. We can- oh, and we get to push. We have the option to push, should yes. we fail? Yes, this is the first option we get to push something. So we make a spot hidden roll to search through the tapes okay. with an option to push. Uh, the result of the spot hidden roll is a failure. We gotta push it, right? We gotta. We I mean, just I gotta. I feel like, okay, I'm always going to be yeah, actually in pushes because I'm the one who's like, no, no, I hold, I like, I will often hold, I will accept uh-huh. failure because then yeah. I can do things and also, later. Like, and also, we but did I'm... just decide, though, and actually, I'm, I think oh. I'm going to change. I'm changing my mind, and I'm with Art on this one because we did just decide that we're not a sentimental person; we're a practically minded person. These are shield tapes covered in moss and spider webs. Okay. Yeah. That's. I just I just found out I spot hidden score is thirty five, so I'm no longer in love with pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, I I I like the idea that our practically minded person as well is like is, is there's there's no option to I fix the cupboard like yeah, yeah. let me just uh, to be like, get that screwdriver that sucks. <laughs> yeah. cool so we're just gonna go to sixty so then in that take case. the L all right Alex if you would like to continue to read uh, sixty the tapes all have weird names scro- mm, is it hang on did I go yep, the right 60. one that's yep. the one. Yeah, if we did not spot something, though. Mm. If the, the tapes all have weird names scrawled in the same handwriting, you note a few. The sun with the trees. Hoping it erupts. The way she moves in the night and the cry of the children. Nope. None of them stand out to you. Maybe this was a prospective site for a rural video store. I don't know. You narrow your eyes and gently close the cupboard door. Go back to 57. Dang. Well, well, I didn't get much from that, have... so I'm leaning to well, what I mean, we know now. that there are similar tapes. These ones have been named. It could be Mark 
storing them. It could be the peeping Tom. Who knows? I mean, the one that was in our VCR was not labelled though. Is no, depressing. but in the it was we got the like this is similar to yeah. Although yeah. We, we were told that the the horror films were bootlegs, but we weren't actually like treated to any. Oh no, this was definitely like a white sticker with handwriting on it, as much as it was just like because the the covers made it sound like they were legit VCRs, if just shitty ones. So who knows? Yeah. I just checked. We we are allowed to use lock in this scenario. We, yes, we are, and I was scared to bring it a little, little bit. Bring it up. Let's do a quick roll to assign our luck now. We do um, have yeah. a luck score. Yes, so we're going to generate a luck score with three d six, and then we're going to rifle through some damn boxes. Excellent. Nine. So timesing that by five to get forty five. Uh, we have a luck score oh. of 45. So we can... <laughs> For a second, I was like, nine's a lot. No, nine is not good. Nine is. No, yeah, yeah, should yeah, we yeah. fail that roll five? Just uh, out of curiosity. I think, we, I think we missed the chance, but how much did we fail that roll by? We failed that spot hidden roll by, uh, thir- with, by about 30 points. Yeah, forget about it. Yeah. Good. All right. Um, so boxes or no boxes? Boxes. Boxes, boxes. Or, or we just bounce, but... I think it's worth just having a having a I rifle think through them. I am now tempted by the boxes. Let's right. do it. Very good. The boxes are wet and caked with mildew. You open the flaps on the topmost box. The cloying smell of rot hits your nostrils as soon as you touch it. Inside is a pile of black clothing. You pull the first article out. The smell gets worse. The clothing is all long and hooded, and each is about the size of a bed sheet. This mm. looks like something somebody would wear in one of Mark's stupid slasher films. Great. We can sign. keep searching through the boxes or go back. I'm inclined mm. to keep on going. It hasn't hurt us yet. Yeah. You're in control, Jackson. Keep searching. I move would like back, to move through move the top. I would like cloth. to move I'd like to move the top most box aside and open the next one down. This one has been more successfully protected from the elements. Inside is a collection of dirty glass jars, a long dagger in a leather sheath, and a handheld camcorder. Okie dokie. We may return to this option, this entry, several times. Uh Oh, yeah. The first time you read this entry, if unsettled is check ticked, you must go to 67. We We aren't unsettled. We aren't unsettled. We're chilled. (laughs) We're good. We're occupied, but not unsettled. We're occupied, but we're not unsettled. I, can we just say that we're going to get all? The, we're going to look at all these three things. I think Jars, maybe we should like order? pick the order of start. them because, like, yeah, I feel like we might be shook by some stuff. I suspect I'm gonna we be honest. Be shook this place is creepy enough that I wouldn't mind, at, like, looking at the dagger because that feels like a, maybe we can just have that as a as a because yeah. this is getting like weird enough where i'm like okay also if someone actually if this stuff belongs to someone i'd rather we had the sharp thing than them all right uh, but the, the camcorder yeah but if we quarter. if we can yes. okay. i wouldn't Cam mind number that. Two. yeah uh all right the dagger I'll say one last thing quickly. It is worth noting that we've been gated at this stage going into the cavern and here by both mm. Pictophobe and Unsettled. So we, we're, mm. we've passed two locks to get here. Mm. The dagger is bigger than it first looked. The blade is about the length of your forearm. You remove the, la- the leather sheath and look at the glistening steel. You see your reflection shadowed in the gloomy half-light staring back at you. The weight of the dagger feels good in your hand. You feel an urge to take it along with you. Yes, we fucking do. Uh, To taste the dagger. uh, To taste the dagger. So we, in in this one, it's interesting. We actually, it sounds like, yeah, to take the dagger, do some stuff. Otherwise, go back to 66. I think we should take the dagger. Fuck yeah, we're taking the dagger. Hell, of course we're going to take the dagger. So we're going to check check, razor sharp. Razor sharp. And then we're going to make an occult roll. A cult roll coming up. Our cult- and this has a fail succeed thing, so I, I'm hoping that this is like full curse. Our cult is five, and we are ah. at 56. Okay, big, so we're going to fail. fail. Uh, and it, I'm going to keep reading this one until we mm-hmm. go back, if that works. Go for it. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, uh, yep. You see your distorted reflection in the dagger's blade. It makes you think about funhouse mirrors, like the one at the tourist beach town you visited as, as a kid. You never liked it there. Go to 66. Okay. 
Uh, so we're back. Sorry, I'm just gonna, back. So we went to 69 to get the dagger and then 362 for the failure. And now we're back to 66, which is, so we've got Bars. the dagger. It's we weird, it. but it reminds us of stuff we don't like. I feel like the camcorder is the worst option. Yes, I want the camcorder. Okay. Well, you get to read it, so go forth, Alex. Kane, Kane. All right. The chunky handheld recording device makes you shiver. Was this what filmed the video you watched last night? Uh, yes. The device is maybe four or five years old, but it's decayed significantly. It, it must have been left here to rot while it was brand new. To press the button and see if the camcorder works, go to 71. I think, I think, look, I'm, I'm, yes, I'm yeah, jam, jamming that button. It. Obviously. You press all the buttons on the camcorder, but nothing happens. The battery is almost certainly dead. You can feel something rattling around inside. Probably another tape. The eject button is jammed, though. Ah, check, tick, mm -hmm. tech support on the log sheet. If toolkit is checked on the log sheet, you remember a useful item that might help. Go to 72. Nice. We do have that toolkit tick. So That's okay. what the screwdrivers are for. Hey. You head back over to the cupboard, grab the screwdriver set, and turn the camcorder over. You... Try to dismantle it to get the tape out. Mechanical repair roll. Look, we're not great at mechanical repair, but uh, we're going to make a red hot crack at it. Okay, but you can also push this one, and I may fight to push this one because I want I want this camcorder. <sighs> That's a ninety-eight. <laughs> That's a fumble, right? There is no fumble effect specifically. That would be a fumble. Here. Okay. So it's just a reg. It's so we 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 Our escaped. Alex, I feel like it is up to you. Our mechanical repair score is. 10. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of feel like, again, we're, we seem to be in the situation where things are weird, but not like we must find mm. out what the shit's going on. So I'm kind of mm. like, this is weird. Yeah. It's fine. We Maybe risk we'll damaging find out something ourselves later. and the tape. We risk like stabbing Ooh, ourselves. Oh, we risk stabbing ourselves with the. Uh, yeah. Okay. Kind of okay to be like, I don't I, need to know what's on the creepy tape. I think mm -hmm. we can just be like, this is weird. We can put two and two together, but like, meh. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to. I'm happy to skip this one if we double down on this kind of personality trait of we've tried it once, we're not trying again. It's not important. Fuck it. Like, like just kind of like. Well, very we're, good. We're leading into. Do you know what I mean? Like, character. we've gone. Huh, that's weird. And then the audience. Oh, it doesn't is going, work. Like, I think <laughs> only, there's definitely the next thing when we're you know? desperate. I think we, we can absolutely like we can definitely if something feels like oh god this is really important like this is either we push it or we die or like something real bad happens or like we oh, really yeah, want to yeah. find out. But at the moment we're like this is weird. Whatever. Yeah. Or even like. I, yeah. If we if we're gonna not if we're not gonna like keep fiddling with it. I think that's a personality trait we have to double down on. And then if Charlie starts fiddling with something, that's what'll annoy us. Like that sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? Like Yeah. 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 I mean look, if, if, we can also just like I'm honestly I'm fine if you want to push it. It's more just like we haven't really pushed anything related to the tapes so far. Yeah. yeah. That's more I'm like, we can absolutely push something that's related to something else, but the tapes specifically are like, we've kind yeah. of just gone, these are weird. Yeah, these are weird and I don't know that I want to know anymore. I'm, yep, let's accept that failure. Mm -hmm. The camcorder stubbornly resists your effort to open it. Uh, maybe you should have paid more attention in woodshop or electronics in high school. Hey. Eventually you give up and toss the camcorder aside in frustration. What a waste of time. Go back to 57. Oh, all the way okay. back to 57. All the way back to 57. Oh, Which means can we not? We oh, we lost the jars. Lost the capacity to look at the jars. Uh huh. We got annoyed. Right. Lost That's the, fine. Okay. All right. There we go. So we are now leave the shed. That's like enough of step. that. Mm -hmm. you, step, you step out of the little shed and back into the forest. You wince in the harsh light of the sun and let your eyes adjust. You make your way back to the trail and continue your hike for about half an hour. Then you turn and head back home for some breakfast. Well, that was alone against the static. I had a really good time <laughs> through the woods. I'm really glad nothing super weird, creepy happened. Uh, it was, but mm -hmm. you know, it was real kind of nice world building, and I'm I'm satisfied with the with the story we found. Um, Were there a bunch of robes and a dagger? I don't know. I don't we have a those. dagger. We do have the dagger, and I think we, we do still. Have it. I don't know if we we still technically have the toolkit because it is still on. Yeah, our it's checked. Sheet. Uh, you Excellent. cross the rise that leads back to the cabin. The sun is high in the sky. It's late morning, soon to be afternoon. You sigh. 
There's no sign of the car and therefore you're probably still without power or your partner for now. You head inside. Everything is well lit by the late morning glow. You change out of your walking clothes and leave them on the bed, then head into the bathroom to shower. If occupied is checked, you remember a minor detail, you must go to 86. Heck yeah. I do remember a minor detail. Okay, 86. You close the door behind you and turn on the shower faucet. Water cascades into the waiting tub below, filling the room with a constant loud drizzle that is almost reminiscent of white noise. The pressure is lousy without power to the pump, but gravity does most of the work. Thank God the water heater is gas-powered. You pause, remembering the bathroom door doesn't keep itself shut. You push it closed harder and put the latch on to secure it in place. You step into the shower and wash the morning hike away. Wow, that seems like a good thing. We're occupied. <laughs> uh, do we want to take our time and soak I'd... shower quickly? I'm hungry. Like, I just had to walk before yeah. breakfast. I'm and starving. If the, pr- if the pressure pr- shit, it's like, this is not going to be one of those showers that, that you nice. kind of, yeah, that you kind of luxuriate yeah. in. This is like a like a sad, warm, but sad drizzle. Yeah, I feel like the it's a wash the walk off, get yourself fresh, but like you're it's not a I'm gonna soak in this yeah. for sure. Let's we're starting the day. We're not, you know, washing yeah. the way of the day. Yeah. Yep. 92. Ninety-two. You get out of the shower and dry off. You step back into the cabin and decide to get dressed. Ooh, jeans and a t-shirt Ooh, to take fashion. practical mm. or warm soft track pants and a sweater for comfortable. Uh what do you want to be? They both the have benefits. <laughs> I feel like I we've established that we're practical. Yeah. We have. Yeah. Like we explicitly. Have. All right. Jim, we would like to be practical. We would like I'll to be practical today. To 93. 93. Freshly practical. dressed, you feel renewed. Now, what to do with the afternoon while you wait for your partner to return? Hopefully, they have a solution to the power problem. We can make some food. We haven't had breakfast yet. We can search for Ooh. flashlights and batteries for when it gets Ooh. dark. Or we can try to fix the power ourselves. It's 94 or 95 for me. Yeah, I feel like... We've seen our mechanical repair. Our electrical pair repair is... Uh... Identical. <laughs> <laughs> Not well, better. Exact value. I don't, I don't I think feel... it's much better. I feel like food because we haven't food. eaten yet today. Yeah. And then if we get the option to like look around for some yeah. stuff to deal with the dark, because if we were, if we were afraid of the dark, I'd be pushing for 95. Well, we're yes, not true. at the moment. Mm. So I feel like food definitely, like we went on a long hike. Let's have something to eat. Oh, ah, what's yep. breakfast? Yep. You head to the kitchenette. You're glad the fridge and stove are powered by gas. Number. You cook up a meal, then enjoy it alone at the little dining table. Check well fed on the log sheet. Oi. Nice. We are kind of crushing it right now. I we feel really like. are. All the good ones. <laughs> getting um, oh, survivalist is any- checked, which it is mm. not. Nope. Um, to eat and enjoy the food, to go to 106, to pick at the plate unenthusiastically and worry oh, about on. your situation. No, no, we're not warriors. We're, we're not, not warriors. Worried. Not we love moment. food and we're good with our situation. Uh, cool. Uh <laughs> Delicious. No, Truly. You are a Michelin level chef. Anyway, yeah. if fully charged or running on empty are checked, uh, you're bored. To, so you must go, okay. but otherwise we can look for flashlights and batteries. Yeah. About, what, flashlights and batteries. That's what we were gonna do anyway. Great. Alright, let's go to 95. All right. You know there was a heavy duty flashlight in the car, but it's gone now. What do you have here in the cabin? Right now, when the sun goes down, you'll be left in the dark. Make a spot hidden roll. Oh, the car is gone. Oh, the flashlight has mysteriously disappeared. No, the, the uh, flashlight from the car, car in here. Car is gone with Charlie. That's true. Spot oh, we don't. Roll. Just double check. Spot hidden. Something. Spot uh, hidden roll. Spot hidden and a success. Thank goodness. Really? Nice. Good for us. Nine, seven. You going to finish this off, Alex? Yes. Dang it. We went to 95 and now we succeeded? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Succeeded. So we're at 97. Lovely. In the cupboard beneath the sink, you find a little plastic container with a mini flashlight in it. You switch it on. It works, but the beam is weak. The batteries are probably dying. You look for spares in the pantry, the bathroom, and in the bedside tables. Eventually, your gaze settles on the TV cabinet. You cross the cabin to the television and and perch on your knees in front of it. You open the cabinet and scan over the videotapes. You move some of them aside to look deeper into the cabinet. In the dark, right at the back, you find a blister pack of batteries. They must be kept here for the remote control, but they fit the flashlight. Jackpot. 
you swap the batteries out and the beam becomes much stronger. Fantastic. Check tick, f- fully charged on the log sheet. And if you charged. are well fed. Which we are. Which we are. You're bored. we got to go to 108. 108 it is. Mm-hmm. But this is going really well. This is going so well, uh, guys. I often like think when we play these solo ones on stream, it's like, oh, yeah, we'll make some mistakes. We'll do some things poorly. But that'll get people to you know buy the, the full thing website so we they can see how it's actually done. Let's do it how it's actually done. Yeah. Um, so by the so, full thing, we see all the disasters. <laughs> please do. That's exactly what I was going for. 108. Uh, we're bored. You can't think of anything else to do in the cabin and restlessness is creeping in. For a while, you lie on the sofa and read an old beat-up paperback from a shelf in the corner. You think it's pretty good, but a little flowery and overwritten, not to mention how grating prose is written in the second person can be. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. <laughs> That's very good. It's a sensible chuckle, That's Brian. Thank you. <laughs> we should make a listen roll. All right, listen roll coming up. Our listen score is actually not too bad. It's 50. Okay. Uh, we have rolled a 96 as a And that's failure. pushable. <laughs> that's it is pushable. very pushable. But we did say we're not going to push things unless we're desperate. We said we'd double down, in fact. So, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't I think, think we're, we're pushing just... it. Huh? I, yeah, I don't think we're pushing it. Yeah. I, th- I mean, again, we don't. We think things like, why wrong. would we? Yeah, so at the moment, we have not. If we were like, if we had chosen any of the anxious actions, uh-huh. I'd be like, we'd be listening. We're just reading a book. We're chilling yeah. out. It's fine. We're not we're actively fed. listening. We're just here. We're just we're, we're, we're straight vibing. We are moisturized. We are in LA and we are thriving. <sighs> we're prepared for the dark. Uh, who just did the reading? Uh, was that me? I believe so. <laughs> yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's, yes, okay, no, cool. it was me. Let's go across right, to 113 with Art. All right. Uh, there's a knock at the door. You set up sharply. You didn't hear any cars. You wait for a moment before moving, questioning yourself. Do you imagine the sound? After a few seconds, you hear another knock, this one louder. You stand up and cross to the front door and open it. A balding man is standing on the porch dressed in a thick winter coat. He has his hands in his pockets. You do not recognise him. Hello, he says. He isn't smiling. He looks past your shoulder into the cabin. Julie home? Julie? That's Mark's wife. So, we can either be like, who the fuck are you? Uh, or we can tell him that Julie isn't here. I, feel I think it's like. who the fuck are you. I think we've established ourselves as somebody who's like pretty practical and is like, excuse me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and he hasn't done the polite thing by introducing himself first. Yeah. Yeah. We're calling him on that, right? 114? Yeah. Or are we just saying Julie isn't here? But uh, oh. if there was a close the door in his face option, we'd obviously be taking that one. But I want to yeah, know I who think... this strange man is. Yeah. And I want to know why he wasn't polite about it, right? Yep. Uh, Alex, this is you, and feel free to read more than one, because this one's short. It's dining. Sorry, who are you? You ask. He ignores your question. Julie, is she home? Okay, now, fuck this guy. Yeah, now fuck this guy. But first spot hidden. And and just for the reference of everybody, uh, the lovely lovely piece of art on the uh, adjoining page. Mm. Mm. Spot hidden roll coming up. Uh, Great. Oh, that one. I thought for a second you were like, the adjoining page, there's a skull? Nah, uh, spot no, with the spooky thing in the big coat. The spot hidden roll is a failure, 88 over 35. Not lucky. Don't have an option to push. Not luckable. Luckable. Just... Uh, 118. You don't know what to say next. Are you lost, you ask? Just looking for Julie, he replies. Can you tell me your name? He stares at you. You stare back. Sir, you ask. Is Julie home? He asks again. To close the door on the stranger. I'm not even going to give us the other road. To keep talking, go to 116. To ask the stranger to leave, go to 117. To close the door on him. Slam the door in his face option. I I feel like the door we should go to an ask to leave option. Yeah, I feel like Mm. ask to leave is like the first. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're not not that worried. Yeah. Let us ask uh, firmly but politely to leave for Mm -hmm. him to leave. 117. Excellent. Jackson? Uh, this stranger gives you the creeps. He's placed awfully close to the door and is standing kind of funny. Sorry, you have to leave. Why? Because this is private property. He stares at you without responding. He's silent for an uncomfortably long time. It's perfect. <laughs> he is moving. 
Just go, you say. I don't want to have to call the police. You got a phone in there? He asks. You stay silent. You know you don't. You can try to reason with a stranger, or scare him off, or shut the door in his face. Hm. Intimidate, persuade, or door. Well, that's the question of failure cases on both of the. Oh, and they're all yeah. different. What? What are our stats on persuade and intimidate? Because that is. Oh, a that's thing a great that question. To know. Intimidate. 60? Yeah, are we intimidating persuade or persuasive? Also sixty. Also sixty. Oh, okay. We've got plenty of luck as well. Sixty okay. means like if we like... fail, it's luckable. I feel like we are we are more of the like I don't know, are we more of like that, hey, you kinda gotta go, or are we like, yo, get the fuck off my porch? I think we're more persuasive. We've got we're 55, reasonable. we've got fifty five brawl. So if we go intimidate, we can back it up. Oh. Yeah, how you done know? are we with this guy? I feel like again, we've said we're like practical. I feel mm. like persuasive is definitely like the the option of like, all right, and in a practical sense, we don't necessarily want to get in a fight with this guy, but also like he's clearly creepy and I don't know yeah. about anyone else, but if someone's standing in front of me creepy, my immediate response is I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be polite, but I'm going to be like, hey, back down, Shachi. Yeah. Fuck off. You got to leave. So I'd say that's more intimidate. I that's- think, yeah, I think intimidate. Yeah. One night, right, make an intimidate roll. We're, we're confident, no, we, and we know we know our we, shit. We've got our we shit down. Uh, we, we, uh, I, sorry, you're right. We have to make the roll before we just assume we're going to succeed. Damn, yeah, right. right. Uh, our intimidate roll has come in at a failure seventy nine. That's nineteen points of luck if we want to succeed. I think so. Right. I think I we do. Like we haven't we used any luck. Yeah, I feel like I we want to succeed this one. Tend to agree. Let's bump this luck down from forty five to oh god, twenty six. Twenty six. Twenty six. Okay. We uh, succeed for 119. Mm-hmm. You feel gravel in your guts. You square off against, oh, sorry, you square off to face the guy. Listen here, you growl. I'll call the goddamn police and have your ass hauled away if you don't get off our property right now. You hear? He blinks. He looks down. After a moment, he turns and walks away, and still in his pockets. You watch him go. He doesn't head down the driveway towards the road. He takes the path that leads into the forest, the same one you went walking on earlier. To follow the stranger, go to 138. Close the door and make sure it's locked. Go to 120. <laughs> yeah. Let's close the door and make sure it's locked. Closing the door and making Fuck sure it's this locked. guy. You okay. need to make sure the cabin's safe. You check every lock you can find. You pull the door closed and lock it, sliding across the deadbolt to make doubly sure. Then you walk to the bathroom and check the window. You latch it shut too. The other windows in the cabin don't open and there's just the one door in and out. Seems safe. Check lockdown on the sh- on the log sheet. Oh, We're in lockdown. Lockdown. Okay, this sounds like a good thing, but it could be like, and then the monster comes you know, through the, the fireplace house, the and you're yeah. all locked down so you can't get out. Charlie I mean, can't I feel, get in. I feel like there's also an option for, like, something's wandering around outside and you're, if you're in lockdown, you're going to have more time to do something. Like, mm-hmm. mm. Stay positive. Why not? <laughs> yeah, it takes yeah. twice as long for us to open the door to get to let Charlie in when he's being stabbed by the whatever. Bet. It'll be fine. Let us settle in for the night. 142. Okay. Yeah. He's been... Wait, hang on. Did we come from? Yeah, one twenty. Cool. Yeah. It's dark. Oh, Jackson <laughs> nailed it. Thank you. Clouds cover the sky, and the moon is hidden. You lay on top of the bed for a while, listening to the wind shaking the branches of the pines all around. Every few minutes, you think you hear your partner arriving back. Every time, you're wrong. When you walk around the cabin, you use your flashlight to guide your way. After a few hours, you make yourself a sandwich and eat it in the dark. While you chew, there is a knock on the door. It is a single knock. Suffocating silence follows it. You can ignore the knock or answer the door. That's not a that's not a loving, hey, my 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 dear, I have returned, and I know you must be have been so worried. I've been gone all day and I couldn't contact you. 
Uh, so let let me reassure you at once, that's not that kind of knock. That's just no. A- it's a single knock, and also like. It, I mean, like, it depends on whether they're saying it's a single knock as in someone goes rap, 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 and then nothing else. Oh, no, I think it's a no, single I think it's a knock bang. followed by suffocating silence. I, yeah, I think it's a single, single knock. That's donk. true psychopath yeah. shit. Yeah, also, like, if it was our partner, they would knock and then knock again. Like, this is And a... say something? Yeah. yeah. So and chat's like... got, a, got a good point. It, it ain't our honey. <laughs> they tried been... the door first, like they'd be trying to get in, like because you know they're not going to knock. It's this is their place too. So, so look, I mean, we don't trust the person who ever knocking. Correct. Do we want to either pretend no one's home, in which case they might be emboldened to try to get in, or do we want to tell them that someone is home, uh, confirm that someone is home, but then wait, you know, wait, is this? Have we moved on to? No, we can either ignore it or answer it. I mean, I think we because answer it in this circumstance would be opening the door. Oh, Why the not hell necessarily would we do opening the door, just answering, asking who it is, I would think. Uh, the, the phrase to answer the door to me means go and like Jim, can you it. pick I can ahead? I confirm that answering in this case will involve op- opening the door. Fuck uh, that noise. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I'm saying, we ignore yeah, it. Absolutely not. No. All right. 183. 183. Uh, let me write that down. Okay. 183. You finish your sandwich and put the plate in the sink. There is no further knock at the door. You are right. Must have just been something tossed at the cabin, brought on by the wind. As the night goes on, it gets colder. You use the flashlight to go to bed and get under the covers. One uh, On the cabinet at the foot of the bed, the television turns on. The power's back. Thank uh, to, goodness. To turn on the light, go to 184. To turn off the awful TV, go to 185. I'm leaning towards... Like, I don't think, uh, me personally doesn't think the power's back. Me think that the TV's just, I think me. Th- I think I the think TV's the haunted. TV. Yeah, TV's haunted. Um, really? Even the I feel like we will find that out much quicker if we just try and turn the damn thing off. Uh, I want to turn the TV off, yeah. Like, yeah. I don't care about the light at, the, at this point. Like, it's okay. 185. The TV's annoying. You hurry over to the television, you hit the power button. Nothing changes. Yep. The screen remains tuned to the VCR, displaying slightly illuminated black. Go to 186. Mm-hmm. Please keep going. Hate this. It's quiet. The VCR is purring. The TV is dim. Depending on your choices, you may return to this entry several times. Select an, op- select an option you have not already chosen. If the quiet in the evening is checked on the log sheet, it's not. You must go to 187. Or if the couple who came to the cabin is checked on the log sheet, Go to 196. If we'd have fixed a tape and played, like, I think this is, yeah. If we'd have been able to fix the camcorder, yeah. Check looking for yeah. yeah, yeah. It's okay. All right, so we can play play the the tape tape from last night. Yeah, to play the tape. Why would I do that? Go to 208. To leave the TV alone, go to 223. I feel like there should also be an option for, like, put the TV face down in a different room and go the fuck to sleep. Open the door, throw the TV out, close the door. We're not opening doors, remember? We can't. No, no, we're not opening doors. Well, we got to leave it alone. A couple of threads. Now, obviously, Mm. I I have some extra insight here, but, you know. Yes. We we now, we, the, the, the cabin is on that path that the weird man was walking down. Hmm. There's just one, there's there's, there's some, there's starting to get bits, starting to get bits and pieces here coming together. I reckon that we... we leave it alone. Leave it yeah. alone. We've got no reason to put the t- to put the tape in. Correct. Two, two, three. Uh, you turn away from the television and cross over to the bed. You sit down and try to avoid looking at it. You can hear it humming ever so softly. You can go to sleep, or we can step out onto the porch and look out for Charlie's return. There's a weird person outside knocking on the door. Let's we uh we yeah, did not like confirm we've, we've, nor deny whether anyone was home. We went we through so much down. effort to lock this place up and we went into lockdown, so Yeah. Uh, like to go to sleep. <laughs> I think we stay that way. Yeah, too, yeah. I'm good. You crawl under the covers without bothering to get changed. At least here it's warm. You set the flashlight by the side of the bed and switch it off. Then you curl up around your pillow, listening to the sound of the wind outside. Wait to fall to sleep. 
Lockdown is checked, so we must go to 256. Uh-huh. Right, 256. A thump at the cabin door startles you awake. You hadn't been asleep long. You fumble for the flashlight and switch it on. You draw the light to the cabin door. It sits there, still locked, just as you left it. The door suddenly shudders with another violent bang. You hear a hoarse grunt just before the impact. Someone on the other side, a man by the sounds of it, is yelling incomprehensibly. He's pounding against the door again and again. It shudders under his weight. The door frame is slowly beginning to split. Good. And if I might, I think, despite this being the most exciting moment as the door uh-huh. begins to crack, no, I, agree. I think this is where we should leave it for today. I agree. We're I agree. I agree. 100% yes. That's a great much- spot. Yeah, Excellent at, cliffhanger. At our at our time slot, a little maybe it's like five minutes early, ten minutes early, but this is going to be a great point to come back on. Uh, yeah. First of all, I'm trusting the editor on this. Are we uh, are we thinking directions for for what's coming next? Oh, I think we got to find something to defend ourselves with. Oh yeah, we've got a dagger. We do. Yeah, I don't know if it's like if we have to if we automatically have the dagger. Or if we need to find the dagger, if we need to go to 241 to find, to like pick up the dagger. Oh, But yeah, we okay. didn't get changed, so maybe we still have it. Hmm. Um, honestly, I, honestly, I think it's probably Charlie. Like, my head is immediately, oh, God, it's Charlie, and he can't get in because I locked everything. No, if it was Charlie, he'd be saying something. Also, like, he specifically grunt, in this case yelling says... Yelling in principally. In what he also says, specifically, this scenario has been very good at not defining yeah. Charlie as male or female, and mm. this says a man by the sounds of it. Oh, so you're I right. think oh, it's great. the crazy guy. Yeah. yeah I think definitely. it's the man who tried, who like, knocked to the door and was trying to get in. It so I think our options, I don't think we're the hiding type because fuck that noise. No, we're not. We ha- we, so we, we are either not. go find something to defend ourselves with or bar the door, like try to keep it shut. Either If we think that the dagger that we have is like enough, if it still counts um, that we have it, mm-hmm. we don't have to find yeah. it. Yeah, I think like because we technically have it marked on our sheet, like we have a little thing we for have it. it that might come yeah. up. Um, but like, yeah, I reckon either we try and find something to defend ourselves with if we don't think that the dagger is useful, or we just go and brace the door, knowing that we have the dagger. We I think we're a defense I, person. I think we I, we're a grab something to defend ourselves with person. I think if if we, if we can see that the door is splintering, we're like. That's not going to hold. I'm not going to be able to get the dagger. I go the other side. I think you if we have the dagger, I think hiding is the most practical thing because then you jump <laughs> out and get a drop on him. Mm. Well, we'll have to decide. Actually, I also think that's entirely going to depend on what our stealth roll is and what like our spot hidden roll Ooh, is. Our spot yeah. hidden thirty five. Our stealth thirty five. Our brawl oh. fifty five. Heck yeah! Get I- that dagger. Yeah, I think I think we either brace the door or try and find something to fight. I don't think we're a stealth I, kind of person. I think yet. we might need chat to help break the tie, but not mm. this chat. Whoever's in stream no, chat you'll have next to week. In next day next week to, to have help your us break say. that tie and decide decide what kind of person we are in a crisis. <laughs> That's absolutely right. So, thank you very very much to everybody. Thank you to uh, thank you to Jackson. Thank you to Alex. Thank you to chat for joining us. Thank you to Brian thank for putting together. Thank, thank you, Jim. Yay! Such a fantastic scenario. And thank you, of course, yes. to Roll Twenty, a uh, great tool that we uh, use. Uh, we will be rejoined next week uh, by Dave, which means that okay. we'll have uh, all kinds of more stability <laughs> in how in how this moves and uh, plays. But uh, we'll also have then, an extra head. Oh, oh yes, that's exactly. Make- so that's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> we'll become the five-headed draw. Like in a bag. <laughs> Yeah, in you a bag. Get one every. It, it's like it's like a level yeah. up thing. Uh, yeah. Adding just a couple of final details. First of all, uh, so after the uh, for those of you who perhaps missed it last time, after we finish off the uh, Alone Against the Static run, we are going to be moving towards our next burst, which will be Regency Cthulhu. Uh, very very fun. I'm very so exciting excited. stuff. I say, absolutely. And My remember, propensity to refer to everyone by their surname is uh, characters by their surname is going to get even more prevalent. <laughs> just, just like your propensity to use words like propensity. Yeah, I'm gonna go reread uh, Pride and Prejudice again just to make sure that I have all of those like uh, appropriate 
words, uh, like, mm. you know, using complacency with a different letter in it because that means a different thing, apparently. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm going to go reread Pride and Prejudice and Zombies so I can get the language but also the mindset that I like bringing mm. to a Call of Cthulhu game. I can't wait to move to the small shire of blank, <laughs> in the sleepy town of blank, blank. in the year yeah. of 18 blankety blank. blank. <laughs> I'm also going to assume that for this one, because Regency, unless I'm mistaken, was specifically a like British slash European thing and not an American one. Uh, that we mm. might, in fact, actually, I might have a reason to use British yeah, accents our, our, as opposed to just doing it because I don't be, know any. We'll be correct, but we'll get, we'll get into the full details of Regency as we get closer to it for the time being, back for Static next week. Remember, you can pick up this uh, solo adventure as well as all the other solo adventures on chaosium.com or from your friendly local game store. You can also pick up uh, a recent, another recent release from uh, Chaosium for the Call of Cthulhu line, the Shadows of a Providence uh, digital mm. release, an updated version of the previously released scenario with all kinds of new and exciting stuff. Uh, we'll be back next week at the regular time. Uh, thank you very much, everybody, and we will see you then. Bye-bye.